So okay. the Honda Odyssey, back seats out, you fill it up. How much do you think you'd make in one single trip and, and profit? In profit. Are we just saying that that's that? I don't know. I mean, how many, let's see, in a, in a case of cigarettes in 10, probably 100, uh, probably 1,000. So you probably about $5,000. 320000 What? Woo! Not kidding you. $320,000 from smuggling That's cigarettes. worth a single trip. trip. So, uh, kids, don't do this at home. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Soon to Be Legends, uh, powered by LDR Studios. I'm MC Clark. Byron is our host. Take it away, Byron. You've like economized our intro, haven't you? I've it's economized like, it. That's it. Just, just this. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the absolute minimum. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Soon to Be Legends. I'm your host, Byron Stankus. Uh, we have uh, we missed a week there because of uh, the the uh, band. Uh, I was going to say killed their drummer. They didn't kill their drummer. <laughs> they fired their drummer. And so, uh, but now we are back with uh, Todd Nesbitt, assistant professor of economics from Ball State University. And don't stop listening because actually we're not going to talk about things like liquidity. <laughs> and uh, quantitative easing or anything boring like no. that. We're going to actually talk about uh, cigarette smuggling and... Bitcoins. Uh, bi Bitcoin? <laughs> we could. Oh, oh Bitcoin. You know stuff about Bitcoin? I, I don't know a bit. squat about Bitcoin. I don't either. But, oh, oh here. And Todd has uh, is involved with two books. Ta-da! This one is uh, Regulation, Economic Opportunity, the Blueprints for Reform. Uh, that will put you to sleep. And uh, <laughs> this one he has edited is uh, For Your Own Good which is uh, taxes, paternalism, and fiscal discrimination, discrimination in the 21st century. Uh, I don't like the second half of that no, title, the, but for, for your, your own, own good, good parts. For your own good with little yeah. puppet strings yeah. in the United States. I like yeah. that. So we're going to talk about kind of some weird stuff yes. with respect to economics. Right. And I think uh, when we were talking, you referred to it as pop economics. Yes. So uh, I think that sounds cool, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, what, what are we going to talk about? Or are we going to talk about you, too? We, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't mean the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, really, the, the way I approach economics is... Uh, uh, you know, we're just storytellers. It's just uh, most, really, yeah. So I thought you were like nerdy mathematicians. <laughs> so there's like half of us at least that are that. But uh, um, okay, I mean that's that's the boring half, right? Nobody that's, wants to ever yeah. hear from them. That's right? why I was saying, everybody, yeah. hang on. It's not going to be boring. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. So I mean, but I mean, a lot of our stories are just incentive based, right? And we can test them and and do all kinds of fancy math stuff with it. But it's uh, a you lot have of the, the other people do the math stuff. Uh, I do that as well. Oh, but, okay. Uh, cool. But it's it's more like what I like to study is a lot of the secondary unintended consequences that are largely counterintuitive. Um, secondary so, unintended consequences. Un unintended. Consequences. Unintended consequences that are uh, uh, counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. So, so if you okay. think of uh, pick uh, one, Go. Uh, adding safety devices onto your car. So okay. Think about how you. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Like you, you safe like cars. We all like to have a safer car. Sure. Right. Uh, in the event of an accident, I'd rather right. stay alive. Uh, and, Me too. And, but here's the, the the thing. Consider how you currently drive your car. <clears throat> Very well. I just <laughs> how aggressive. Oh, okay. you know, like how how uh, much you end up uh, um, speeding, getting distracted, speeding, okay. um, you know, accelerating hard, right. cornering hard, all those types of things, right? An economist would then say, okay, well, if we're going to add even more safety devices onto your car, right? Uh, then you're likely going to respond by driving more more recklessly than you do now. Most people don't buy it. But if I change the cir circumstance, I say, take your current car. Right. And now I'm going, and, and how you currently drive, I'm now going to remove your seatbelt, remove all airbags. I'm going to add a metal dagger sticking out of the middle of the steering wheel, pointed directly at your heart. How you drive. Uh, I'm Not like at all. I'm going to let Clark drive. <laughs> I Uber. <laughs> I Uber. That's what I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right? And so, I mean, it makes logical sense that way. So, right. you know, if you're if it's, if it's I make your car more dangerous in the event of an accident, you're going to drive more safely. Well, the logic has to work the other way as well. And, and so that's where, you know, economists are like, oh, okay, like that's, we need to test this. If you look at street level studies on this, it's right. all over the place because there's so many things you can't control for. So not all the cars on the street have the same safety devices. There's deer, there's construction, there's rubbernecking. There's all kinds of craziness that you can't control for. Right. Girls putting on makeup while yeah. driving. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Texting and yeah. Um, and so uh, what I ended up using, my first academic study I ever wrote. Uh, as a grad student, uh, I use NASCAR data to test this. Okay. Um, and so in, in NASCAR, like all the cars have the same safety devices. I know the traffic density. I know the length of the, of the track and how many cars are there. Um, all the drivers have similar si skill. Right, I so know why they're driving fast. I know all these different things. And sure enough, as they've the cars have become safer, yeah. I'm able to isolate that effect. They have more accidents. They're choosing to drive more recklessly. 
Uh, do you think they're driving it's these It's kind of their job. Yeah, though. but I mean, are they tra- – yeah, <laughs> right, but are they driving – are the NASCAR drivers driving more recklessly <clears throat> or they, they know that there's that cushion that they can push it the edge a little bit further, but right? That's, because that's they how have all to get, of us are. They have to get it. Oh, so you're – so that's kind of the point. They're yeah. a control group, right? Yeah. Because all of the variables are contained, yes. right? And then what you do is you're saying, okay, based on this control group, as NASCAR made their cars safer, those guys push the edge a lot more yes. and also have more accidents. Right. Which, by the way, fun for the fans. Yes. And they're not dying, so also still fun for the fans. Correct. Right? Yes. Because no, no, nobody wants to see them die, right? But, you know, when they're spinning through the air and you're like, holy yeah. crap, and then he walks away, you're like, that's awesome. Yeah, anyway. I mean, it, it really shouldn't be a big surprise. If you make these cars that are effectively in, a, in, a, in an event of an accident, they're right. effectively a tank. Right. Right. Well, of course I'm going to try to drive this tank as fast as I freaking can. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, well, I guess that may, I mean, you say that this stuff's counterintuitive. That actually sounds kind of, that makes one's kind sense. of sci- That one, I think, makes sense. But I think most people, when they try to apply it to themselves, they ignore that fact. Well, I, yeah. So two examples of that is I've heard that um, when they put crosswalks, like crosswalk lights into intersections, yes. more people get hit than yes. when there's no uh, crosswalk light. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Is that true? Uh, and and heard it's that. also uh, I heard it on yes, the internet. So, so. there, there is a, economic studies on this that okay. have actually looked at that. Okay, and yes, that's true. And I've well, also, there's the variable of technology. People holding their phones all the right, time. Right, distraction. Just, uh, right, right. But I mean, and the think other about, thing if, I've heard, if you're going through a crosswalk as a pedestrian, I think, oh, like, I'm safe. There's like an imaginary barrier that's going to stop all these cars because I have the right of way on this this, this right. crosswalk, and so you see the little like walking man, you know, come right. up and I, I just go. It's not the hand or the playing pool guy, <laughs> right? Okay, uh, and and so a lot of people don't pay as much attention. It's they're a lot. You're, we're all a lot safer to cross the street if we're jaywalking. Uh, because we're actually paying attention, right? Because you know, like, ooh, I gotta dodge that car, right? Because he doesn't know I'm coming. And the cops, and the cops, <laughs> right? Right? No. And the other thing that I thought was interesting along those counterintuitive lines, I heard someone put a proposal in because football has been having issues with CTE and the helmets, right? The guys are getting bigger, they're moving faster, yeah. they're hitting each other, and somebody actually put a proposal together. You want to get rid of head injuries? Take their helmets away. Yes. And I was like, wow. That, you look that, at look at rugby, right? There's, I mean, like rugby, I mean, they're hitting full on as well, right. but they're hitting in a different way. They don't right. launch with their head because they don't have any protection. Right. Uh, and there's, again, academic studies on this as well that show, okay, well, yeah, there's there's fewer you know, injuries, severe right. injuries in, in rugby uh, compared crazy. to football. Uh, and I honestly, I think that in uh, uh, this preseason, uh, in, in off season here, you've seen a lot of the, the helmets where there's extra padding yeah, over the, top of them. Yeah, the bubbles on them. I honestly think this is going to be a backfire. You think so? Um, so you think in so you think what will happen is in the preseason and in practice they're going to have these bubbles on their head, which means they're going to quote feel safer. Mm-hmm. And then when they get into live action, they're going to forget that's not there and they're going to leave with their yeah, head. They, they, have they more get into a habit of of being are they more wearing, apt to hit with their head. Are they forward. wearing them in games? No. no. Okay. No. Yeah, just practice so you don't get a concussion at practice. Right. right. So, so yeah, so if you're going to get the concussion, let's do it in the game, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's fun for everybody. It no, doesn't matter. But I mean, that, 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 that'll be an interesting thing to, to yeah. see if those numbers go up because obviously they're doing it because they want more safety for the right. players, right? Yes. But on the flip side of that, you're thinking it might actually be more dangerous. Now, the question is, is it going to be more dangerous for the players in the games only or is it just going to be more dangerous overall? I think it's probably just going to be more dangerous in the game okay. just because they get into that habit of – being so willing to hit their do you head. Think, do you think uh, maybe overall the concussions will still be less over the course of mm. a season because they're not getting concussed in practice. They're only getting concussed in the games. Even though the number of incidents in the games may go up, it's still going to be less than what's in question. practice. But uh, the other variable yeah. Look is, at me. I might do an academic yeah. study. <laughs> the other variable is they're – Techniques are different and taught differently Correct. because of that I, as well. I, I know that for sure for lacrosse. We the, Lacrosse has gone through this as well because it's a contact sport and we wear helmets and that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, there's rules, but you definitely the technique in which you play defense these days is substantially different from 20 or right. 30 years ago. So uh, I, that that is that to that point, I agree with that. So, mm-hmm. so, that, so those are a couple of things that I've kind of noticed that are sort of counterintuitive uh, that yeah. sort of way. So <clears throat> what else what else you got for us? All right, so – my the the thing that in, within economics that I've probably become most uh, famous for now. Ooh, you're is, famous. Uh, nice. Yeah, so I actually got invited to give give talk over at the. Uh, this has been like a decade ago now, but uh, over at the OEC OECD Secretariat Center in Paris, and then uh, the very what next the hell, month. What are those? What are those initials for? Uh, OECD. Yeah. So I think that's a that's uh, a disease Clark has, right? <laughs> no. OECD. No? Oh, that's different. Sorry. I do. I do. I've been trying to clean that toilet for like three months. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we won't but, send a camera in there so no one yeah. knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. But so so um, you were invited to this thing yeah, in Paris, so, uh, an economic and, and forum. And it was really, it was just the, the whole event was about international smuggling of cigarettes that is caused by the taxation of cigarettes. Uh, so and, and it's it's amazing. Like most people in the United States have no clue that there is massive smuggling in the United States. In it's, the United States. In the United States. So you you went to Paris to find out there's a lot of smuggling. In no, the United no, no, no. So I had already done the research here, oh, okay. and they were really calling me over there to talk about the U- U- U.S. Uh, experience. So, so what? And that's why the Lucys are so popular, like in the bigger cities. So honestly, like so, um, uh, Eric mean, Garner, like the the guy that was in a chokehold. Um, yeah. and ended up dying from that. He was selling Lucy's that he had legally purchased in Virginia and then illegally carted up to New York and was selling individual sticks, those are Lucy's, uh, to individuals on the street. And uh, and, and um, those are those are smuggled cigarettes. Yeah. And so how are so how are they getting these are they smuggling them in from like Canada? Are no, they getting so them right it's, off the it's farm? Actually a lot of it is uh, robbing uh, most of truck? what's happening in the United States is uh, uh, they will buy legally in bulk, and particularly in Virginia uh, is one of the main states right now. Because the taxes are because low. The taxes New are York only has now. an extra tax, right? Yeah. Okay. So the tax in Virginia, this is a, a great um, – uh, I, I haven't updated this. They just recently in Virginia increased their tax from $0.30 cents per pack up to 60 I okay. haven't adjusted the numbers for that, but it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, so let's talk from last year. Okay. The tax was $0.30 cents per pack. Okay. In New York City, right. you have – the state tax of four dollars and thirty-five cents per pack, per pack, and then you also have the city tax of a dollar fifty, and so you're looking at without even accounting for the federal tax, which is another dollar one, um, right? So holy moly, uh, right? So you have a total taxes of six eighty-six in New York City and only a dollar thirty-one in Virginia. Okay, right. By the way, it's now in Chicago. It's eight seventeen per pack combined Damn. across all all levels. <clears throat> okay, right. And so so if you take your typical minivan. Right. Okay. Uh, so Honda Odyssey, take out the back seats. Right. Buy in bulk in Virginia, paying state tax of, uh, la- of last year, thirty cents per pack. Right. Uh, buy them legally in bulk. Right. right? A lot, buy them legally in bulk. So yeah. what you're saying is, uh, so you're paying the the dollar thirty or dollar thirty one in taxes okay. plus the cost of this right. of this pack. Yeah. And then illegally take them up to New York City. Right. And then illegally sell them in legal outlets, which is what's going on. Uh, and so, so if you go illegally to a, sell them in legal outlets, yeah, so, so go, go to the to, corner store yes. and say, Hey, I'll, I'll sell you these cigarettes for less than what you get them and from so the distributor. It's, it's actually, you're not even, like the consumer doesn't even pay attention. Right. So the only thing that's different, if, if you go to like a neighborhood bodega, a neighborhood right. convenience store in New York city, right. not, obviously not times square, uh, but in a, in a neighborhood, uh, if you pay cash for your cigarettes, I almost, I can guarantee you, you, uh, are probably going to get a pack that has a Virginia tax paid stamp on it. Oh, so you can actually look at the. You can. Okay, but see, um, I know nothing about cigarettes. Yeah, I, I never. I don't. I've smoke. never smoked myself. I right. don't in, encourage well, but, it really. Yeah, but, but you're you study this stuff, but, so yeah. you get to know things. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I get to bring you on. That's how I get to know. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so anyway, so if, if you then sell them and you know, illegally right. sell them these legal outlets just at the going price, right? Right. Um, you're basically looking at a tax differential from what you just paid to what you're now selling right. of five dollars and what fifty five cents a pack per pack. And how much do you think 20, you would make? And there's twenty packs in a carton, right? Uh, ten packs. Ten packs in a carton. Yeah. So it's fifty bucks in a carton that you're just that's free money. Yeah, essentially. And then, um, and now then how carload much, of Odyssey. Yeah, and, and so okay. the Honda Odyssey back seats out. You fill it up. How much do you think you'd make in one single trip and, and profit? In profit. Are we just saying that that's that? I don't know. I mean, how many, let's see, in a, in a case of cigarettes in 10, probably 100, uh, probably 1,000. So you probably about $5,000. 320000 What? Woo! Not kidding. $320,000 from smuggling that's cigarettes. worth a single trip. trip. So I, kids don't do this at home. <laughs> Holy crap. Seriously? Yeah. And, and But the thing is, they're not taking you, they're, they're not taking minivans. They're taking U-Hauls. Right. So you're looking at millions of dollars in a single trip. Just profiting off the tax. Just smuggling cigarettes inside the United States. Yeah. yeah. So, and the pen, here's the thing: is a lot of people that you know, if, if but you're you have in, to have somebody to go buy them, right? I mean, you got to set up a network. You of have people to that's have that network to, to, right. to buy those. Absolutely. Things. Like, you, and you got to you can afford to pay the network when you're making that kind of check. Well, you know, right. like, yeah, but I think somebody already has that network, and they don't want you involved. So yes. <laughs> kids don't do this at yeah. home. But holy. Yeah. Jeez. And really? the thing is, there's there's people now substituting out of like the traditional underground economy with hard drugs, and instead transporting cigarettes because it's almost as profitable 
Right. And you're less likely to be caught. Right. Because it's a legal product. Right. Uh, and uh, if you are caught, the penalties are much lower. That sounds a little bit like I had seen a thing on TV about how the mafia in Sicily now spends uh, m- most of their money comes from fake virgin olive oil. Hmm. That they are they're exporting virgin extra virgin olive yeah. oil, but it's not really extra virgin olive oil. It just has the labels, and they try to get around, and they have these all these taste testers to do. Because, I've not heard of this because it's the same because because like yeah. what you said, the same thing with that they are. Um, that it's if they get caught, it's oh, okay. Yeah. So they're so they're selling it's, canola oil or or bad olive oil instead of virgin. They just change the right. label and it tastes pretty good. And Americans don't know, so they ship yeah. it over to us or whatever. <laughs> so you know because the, the the penalties are so less. But that so that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, it's it's, I, it's nuts. And that and then is that a big industry in the U.S.? Yeah. So if you look at uh, based on our estimates, and we're not the only ones that are in this ballpark now. Uh, but uh, so I update the, these numbers every single year. But um, the percentage of consumption in New- the state of New York okay. that is coming from outside the state. Okay. Uh, so this type of smuggling right. uh, is about fifty-three percent. Wow! So more than half the cigarettes that are being sold in the city of New York, consumed in the in the in the, consumed, in the state, right, yeah, are being smuggled in in this in some way like this. It could just be cross-border shopping, somebody going across the state lines, avoiding the tax. Some of that's legal. So, so, like, if, if you go to New Jersey to buy your yeah. cigarettes just to, like, I, well, I grew up in New York, just outside the city, mm-hmm. and we would go to New Jersey right. to buy yeah. gas. So yes. there's really a good reason to go to Jersey now, huh? <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> like gas and cigarettes. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what Jersey's good for. Yeah. I don't um, know. Sorry. But, I mean, so uh, with cigarettes. Yeah, we just lost whatever, uh, the one viewer from New Jersey. <laughs> 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 but if, if uh, uh, you go across the state lines and for your own personal use buy right. a two cartons right. and bring them back across the state line, that's legal. Okay. Um, it's tax avoidance, but it, it, it's not evasion. If you bring a third carton, that's illegal. Really? Uh, in some states, you're only allowed one carton per person in the vehicle. Okay, so so most of this smuggling is, is you, you use New York and Virginia as examples. Is this happening all over the country yeah. or is it only happening in like a couple of these major no, uh, progressive cities with high taxes? Uh, most of the cigarettes that are being smuggled in are like it, you look at as a percentage of consumption certainly new york is up there illinois is now up there pretty chicago, high Chicago, yeah yeah because of chicago <clears throat> um and then uh you know certainly uh you look at washington state of washington um but they california, have a high tax as well in california yeah. okay um and even um you know arizona has you know quite a bit as well so really um as a percentage of their consumption yes okay yeah. and 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 so, uh, and what states are they mostly smuggling out of? So a lot of it is actually from the traditional tobacco states, because all of those states, for obvious so, reasons, would so have v- lower Virginia, tax. Maryland, to the Carolinas, Tennessee. So, uh, so yeah, so Tennessee, the Carolinas, uh, Georgia. Uh, so there's there's you know okay. that's six states right around there. I got you. Uh, but uh, I named four of them, and then you yeah. repeated. See, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, you're okay, good. Okay. You're good. I, I don't know. Um, but it, this is also it matters a lot for you know, Indiana as well. Okay. You know, we're not a, we're not a tobacco state, right? But we are very close to Chicago. Oh, so people uh, buy from Indiana? Yeah. So what's the Indiana tax versus like so an Illinois tax? We have Indiana tax is ninety nine point five cents. Okay, so uh, ninety nine point five. So it'll be two bucks if you count the federal tax on right. top of that. Yeah, and you're looking the, at eight seventeen in Chicago. So yeah, so that's like a six plus dollar difference just to move. Wow, that's I mean, and, and there's a ton of people that nice. live in that north northwest corner of, of Indiana that work in Chicago, and so they're already making this trip. Whether they're so you're talking about like Gary, right? Yeah, like moving out. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Clark. so the 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 states that are doing this high tax, it's relatively ineffective. Yeah, so because it's, so the, a lot it's of the designed reason, to yeah. be a deterrent from smoking, yes. right? Yes, and so all the and proponents it, are, so, are going. Yeah, so sorry, yeah, go so, yeah, like he said, it's a designed to be a pro, uh, to keep you from smoking because it's a sin tax, S I N, right? Not yeah. uh, right, and but it's also a, a revenue generator, and yeah. so in both these cases, the higher the tax, they're avoiding, they're avoiding the revenue generation, right? And they're it's not a, making a dent in right. people smoking, or or is it, or is so is it? Yeah, so there's there's. It's actually really interesting. Notice that one thing I think is really interesting is proponents of these taxes will in one breath say, oh, we want to discourage smoking because we want to encourage people to be healthy. Sure. And then, as you were just saying, we also want, you know, like this would be great for raising revenue. Notice if you're successful at raising revenue. Right. 
That means you are bad at. You haven't succeeded over here, right. and if you succeeded over here, you can't raise a lot of revenue. Right. Uh, right. These can't both happen. But politicians, like it's Say politics, is like, oh, okay, well, we're going to ignore reality and uh, trick people. You mean right? politicians <laughs> ignore reality? No way. <laughs> That's so strange. Anyway, oh, so, but uh, bite my tongue over here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there are gonna, a couple. We're going to walk that line. Right? We'll see how this goes. <laughs> uh, there are a couple states. Uh, certainly, Massachusetts uh, and New Jersey being a couple. Right. Just uh, that they now are at this tipping point where if they increase based on our estimates, uh, if they increase their tax anymore, right, uh, they actually lose total revenue. Right, because what will happen is people will then start importing things yeah. instead and, of exporting really, it to those, New York. Those particular states, uh, you know, it's they lose so many people coming in from New York. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. crazy. So there's yeah. so there's actually like a, a an actual number that's a tipping point. Yeah, and, and it's taxes. different for every state. And it's yeah, yeah because because that, I'm sure that's based on the states surrounding them, right? right. Yep. Like so, what's what, what the tipping point in Nebraska would be because of you know Kansas and Missouri being near them in Iowa is so going to be different, yeah, right? Than right. it will be in Indiana versus yeah. Chicago, kind of. Yeah. Thing. You bring up uh, Missouri. That, that's the interesting case. It's not a tobacco ta- uh, state, right? But they only have a tax of 17 cents per pack. They no idea why. why. No clue. It doesn't make any sense. Because they really want to be libertarians. No, yeah. they, I don't. Yeah. yeah, it's it's weird. Right? They're, they're Do they tax their way. meth there? Because they could really make some money then. No. Right. No? Taxing meth. Taxing meth. <laughs> Sorry. I so, don't know. But anyway, so then there's this health effect. So coming right. back to that, that okay. argument you were making. Um, and, and so proponents will see, oh, well, sales have fallen. Right. Uh, and so they'll say, oh, we won. And right. Like, you know, health has improved. And they're, but they're ignoring this underground economy that they've encouraged. Uh, and so consumption, yes, consumption does go down after you raise these taxes, no doubt. But okay. do, do, do they, can they statistic, statistically say that the health is improved because people aren't smoking as much? Uh, they they will make the assumption that because sales have fallen, people aren't smoking. Now, are those, yeah. now the question is, are those, so you, you're, you're selling a carton of cigarettes at a bodega, right? Are they counting the cigarettes? as reduction in sales on the ones that have the state tax stamp on them, and they're not counting the ones that came right. from Virginia, for example. So yeah. the, the, oh, the, the real sales or usage of cigarettes may be different than what their numbers are indicating yes. because because some of it is on the on the sly on the table. right okay yeah so everything that's under the table basically so the ones that you paid cash right where they were pulling the pack from Virginia that's illegal for them to sell and so they're not reporting that to the state at all right and so the state so they're not even reporting a sale at all then no wow that's all right well I guess yeah. that's I guess so that's how you do it so loosen out right? on yeah it, it's it's that double sided thing you're better off just not having a higher tax on that stuff and you get that why don't we just not tax it at all just yeah you want to go get cancer go get cancer just don't don't make me pay for your you know and the other side of it is where does that tax money go for these sin taxes like yeah so um in a big hole we know that (laughs) some of it they will say that uh some states will earmark it for education Uh, some states will earmark it for some sort of health expenditure, right. and then a lot of it just goes to general fund. Okay. Um, but even when they earmark, and this is actually some of some of the research that I do, I just haven't looked at it in terms of cigarettes. Uh, earmarking money's fungible. Uh, the okay. budgets are fungible. So if if I earmark if it. I was already spending a billion dollars on this project, and now I, I have half a billion dollars coming in from a dedicated source, well. I can just free up three hundred, you know, right, from million else. dollars yeah. to spend so, over here. So this money over here is uh, earmarked for this project. But if this project's already fully funded, then we'll take the earmark money, move it over here, and then take some of this out and yep. move it to another project. So yeah. we're not really using this money over here, although indirectly that's exactly what we're doing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds very economic, professory. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, no. 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 That's no, good. That, yeah. that seems uh, a little shady too. I well, think, it's yeah. politics, man. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, that's uh, city budgets and stuff. Yeah. Right? State budgets. That, that's they do that stuff all the time, right? Right. Yeah. That's crazy. And yeah. and now is are there. Uh, is there any other products like that where there's a high tax like gasoline or something like that where you find a lot? Because I, I get it that with gas taxes, particularly in today's environment, people are, you know, will drive to another state or will drive to another city to get a lower lower grade. Yeah. But are people smuggling gas as well? Or is there any other product no, like cigarettes like, or is that a unique Cigarettes are thing? really convenient in this way just because they're so small and lightweight. Okay. Right. Uh, gasoline, that would be very costly to try to smuggle that. You will see at the at a very minor level, it's more just cross-border shopping aspect okay. with alcohol. Right. Um, I know that, that uh, some of my... Uh, um, my friends in college certainly drove 
you know, I, I went to school in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, they drove to, to West Virginia, right. um, you know, several times to, just to, to buy alcohol. To buy alcohol, just yeah. to because it's cheaper because yeah. you're avoiding the tax. Yeah. Uh, anytime we played hockey in Canada, we'd always do that. Because yeah, bringing get, Coors back from Colorado yeah, we, we, to the Indiana back in the day was like a big. That was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but didn't in Colorado they have it was all three two beer, like the regular stuff. There was they didn't uh, have like higher. Alcohol yeah, because you could drink when you're 18 there. For oh, the okay, time. that okay, that's a different that's a different yeah. thing. That's not yeah. a tax in a thing. Yeah. That's a that's a legal thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Clark would drive like 18 hours yes. to get a beer. <laughs> Got my six pack of Coors. <laughs> Got my six pack of Coors on my 18 hour drive. Oh, good times, Clark. Yeah. Good times. So, so the, but there's so there's no really other product like that. That's sort of unique it's, that way. That one's a it's certainly more unique. Okay. Yeah. It uh, is, it, now, it, it's a product that. You don't have to have in any certain condition, cooled or, you know, right. it's yeah. Yeah. light. Well, like you said, lightweight. You can load yeah. an entire truck and 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 or a back of a minivan, and you can't yeah. even tell that the that the weight is right. different, right? I mean, yeah. you load up a, you know, I don't know, something else. Yeah, as you fill your trunk full of, of, of gasoline alcohol. or alcohol, oh. it's going to lo- <laughs> yeah. Ro- yeah, low, yeah, low, low rider. Yeah, so okay. But yeah, th- this this whole project. So I've been estimating cigarette smuggling for the last uh, fifteen years. Um, so every year for the last 15 years, this whole project started because of, uh, there's a distributor that's up in, um, uh, uh, the Detroit area. Okay. And there was a high rate of, of hijacking of their shipments. Really? Like, yeah. Um, like still today, like in the old mobster movies? So, I mean, like within 15 years ago. Yeah. They were, they were like armed people with, you know, like they would, they had a couple and of the drivers shot, uh, nobody killed, but a couple of drivers shot just for uh, cigarettes, just for cigarettes. Um, and so what they started doing is, is they started, you know, the, the police had other things that, you know, they were over overworked and, right, and, and sure. stretched. And so they weren't able to help. And so what they started doing, that distributor, um, they started playing a shell game with the, the with the trucks. Yeah. And so they so would trucks would, they would send out three trucks at a time. Only one of them would have anything on it. And so they cut the success rate down from from these hijackings down to from, you know, basically down to uh, 33% they, of the normal rate. So that largely squashed it. And so that distributor approached uh, my colleague uh, and, uh, okay. at the Mackinac Center up in Michigan. And was like, hey, can this can't just be like a local thing. Right. Uh, can you estimate what the bigger effect is here? Wow. Uh, and, and, and so ne- you've, you've had studies on this and you've been doing it, what do you say, 15 years or yeah, so? Yeah. So you've been doing that. Has that had effect at all on, on policy? Like so, there's clearly yeah. some evidence here. That, that some of this is working and some of it isn't, or, right. or like you said, in Massachusetts, that they, they're at this tipping point. Is anybody paying attention to that? So to some degree, I, I will say, uh, uh, I think I had a success in, in Ohio. Okay. Um, they were, I think this is in 2015, they, they, there was a proposal in, within the budget to increase the cigarette tax by a dollar. Okay. Uh, and uh, I testified and gave this information, and it was... Um, I think that was for the Senate. The Senate removed the tax entirely. And the state the, Senate? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then they sent it to the House. The House re-added, but only added 40 cents, and that's what was eventually approved. Okay. And so I think that, that's a minor success, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, so, good. Uh, so somebody's and, listening. And, and so there, I that's think there's cool. some isolated cases like that, but uh, mostly it's it's being ignored. Now, the police force, uh, they they actually really like what we're, we're doing because it's like they're using this as like, hey, you know, there's a lot of smuggling. We need a bigger budget so we can fight this. Okay. Um, and so they're they're not arguing that hey, you should get rid of you should lower <laughs> your taxes. Argue, you no, know, they're arguing you should give us more money. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, we'll we'll raise the taxes so we can give you more money. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh wait, <laughs> that's terrible yeah, for everybody. Let's right. let's, let's in, create an environment to you know make all all of our citizens you know outlaws. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that's, yeah. that that happens. I'm sure yeah. at some point. I don't know. Yeah. What um, else you got? Uh, so let's continue on the cigarette side and really? look at more okay. of, uh, on the, the health consequences because okay. um, even, you know, like, yes, okay, the people aren't reducing their consumption by as much as what the proponents think, but even ignoring that, there's a lot of negative secondary unattended consequences from this. And so if oh, you really? look at... Okay. Uh, so not, um, just, not just fiscal. It's, it's not just fiscal. And okay. so um, if you look at the type of cigarette that people are consuming, uh, there's, you know, most of these taxes, let me back up are on a per unit. They're not a percentage of the price. They're on so many cents or so many dollars per pack. Okay. Right. And that's considered to be what we, what we say is a fixed unit charge. Right? Okay. So uh, any product that you apply a fixed unit charge on that has different quality grades right. will 
lead to people buying less of it. First law of demand still holds. Right. Um, price goes up, people buy less, um, slightly at least. Um, but of those that continue to buy, a higher percentage of them will choose to buy the higher quality version of the good. Okay. And so let me give you a simple example first. So think of uh, a Hershey's bar and a Godiva chocolate bar. Okay. Right. So Hershey's is okay. Right. Godiva is better. Right? right. Suppose that they are a dollar and two dollars. Right. So Godiva costs two Hershey's bars. Right. Right. One hundred percent more expensive. Uh, if you now apply a dollar tax on candy bars generally, uh, the the prices approximately go up to two dollars and three dollars. Right. Still a dollar tax, a dollar right. dollar difference in that. But now Godiva is not a hundred percent more expensive. It's only fifty percent more expensive. Okay. Right. So um, now more people. So are more people more. because the relative price isn't okay. as, as big of a spread. People will substitute toward Godiva. Okay. So right? in the cigarette case, you're saying they'll buy the more expensive brand? Yeah, the premium brands. The premium yeah. brands. Uh, so they substitute toward premium brand. Now, what is quality in cigarettes? Again, this is, I, I, I don't Subjective. Smoke, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, but cool is it, the low end and <laughs> Camel Ultra is the better? Know. I don't know. Um, but it, it's it's really what, what I from what I understand, it's it's you're substituting toward higher flavor. It's more flavor. Okay. Uh, that's the, the quality, cig higher quality cigarettes have, have more, more flavor. flavor. Okay. But what... In makes the flavor? cigarettes, yeah. it gives you the flavor. That's the tar. The chemicals. Is it really? It's tar gives you flavor. So what uh, ends up happening So they is... smoke sm cigarettes that have more tar. They oh. might smoke a little bit fewer cigarettes, but they're smoking cigarettes that have more tar in them. And what give, what causes uh, cancer? It's not the nicotine. No. It's the tar. Wow, jeez. Right? And then on top of that, uh, you end up having the situation where um, it, this is getting outside of the economics and more of the psych uh, behavioral psychology. Um so uh, if you're smoking cigarettes at, you know, smoking fewer cigarettes, your nicotine level in your bloodstream is a little bit lower than what you're used to. Right. And what they call that is your set point. So right. your body gets used to this set, set point, okay. some level of nicotine in your system. And unconsciously, you will start changing your behavior to try to get back up to that set point. Right. And so if you're smoking fewer cigarettes, that means of the cigarettes that you're smoking, you're going to take deeper tokes. And instead of standing here, like just having it, talking to somebody as it's lit, you're going to be like puffing on it. Smoking it all the way down to the filter, right. man. Right. Uh, really? And so and are, you going to, are you going to supplement that with something else too, like uh, chewing tobacco or vaping or something else um, to kind of add to that? It, possibly. Okay. Um, but, but even but, if, yeah. even. So even without that. Even without that, psychologically, you're, you're, you're not intentionally doing this. Psychologically, your body's like, I got to yeah. get that nicotine in me. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so. Smoking deeper tokes, more consistent tokes on cigarettes that have higher tar. Which is this is not good for your lungs. Right. Okay. Uh, this is not the slam dunk. Now, is it everybody that 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 you know, all these smokers are they necessarily worse off as a result of these taxes? Not no. Uh, but for the the moderately heavy smoker, right? There's a good chance that that person's health is actually worse as a result of these taxes. And that and that goes back to the unintended consequences yeah. of these things that that. And, now, are these things could have been predicted? Is it one of those things that, are, that we had to go through and do some of these stupid things that we now know? Oh, okay, <laughs> now now we can do we can predict this. So, like, what's happening now is marijuana is becoming legalized right. in a lot of a lot of places, and they're talking about very <laughs> much the same things. Mm -hmm. Are we going to find? Did we already know this before, or now we're going to use this as a model going forward on marijuana use and marijuana usage as the taxes go? Are we going to you you predict that we're going to see some of these same things? Uh, I would say that the economists have been predicting these things all along, but okay. nobody listens to us until okay. we actually have real Oh, life great. Data. No one listens to you? Why did we have you <laughs> on? The whole point is to get people to listen. I don't know. Right. All right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so, yeah. So I don't think anybody was really listening on, on the cigarette smuggling right. part okay. until we actually had a bunch of data to, to show it. Right. Uh, and now we're starting to have that headway. Uh, now, the, you, you mentioned you know, marijuana becoming legal. Right. Really, a, a prohibition is just an infinite excise tax, right. like a, an ex, a good specific tax, like what okay. we've been talking about. Um, and so we're going the opposite direction in marijuana. We're actually, in effect, reducing the taxes there. Okay. Um, and so um, now there are some states where you see that, that have legalized it where the taxes are so high. Like uh, Illinois is horribly yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, compared uh, like to Michigan. The state of, oh. of, of uh, Washington, for example, uh, they tax all three levels of, of production in that. So the grower, the processor, and the retailer. Right, they so tax they got that at, tax? Yeah, so, okay. and it's 25% it's at every single level, and it builds on itself. Right, so if a 
if a grower sells to a processor, the processor had to, pay, or the grower had to pay 25% tax on that. Now, as part of the sale price that the processor sells to the retailer, um, go up 25%. It basically they includes tax the limit. value of, right. of the grower to begin with, and now and the tax that that one was already paid. Right. It's a tax on a tax, and right. then the retailer is a tax on a tax on a tax. Okay. Uh, it's crazy. Um, and so, it is what's happening in place like that is are now people now going back to the black market and getting smuggling stuff, and they're yeah. not they're not buying yeah. the legal if stuff. If you have the tax too high, then then the underground market's already established. You don't. I mean, like. So it's going to be even worse in that particular case, um, right? Because there is an underground market already established, yeah. and you already have quote pipeline from wherever these other places are that right. these growers are. Yeah. Right? Wow, that's... And then you're going to have places like where, I don't know, I mean, Nevada has a low tax and California has a high one and people will smuggle it yeah, across absolutely. those borders as well. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, we're already seeing, like, you know, obviously people going to Colorado and, and, and others, other places um, where it's it's legal. Like, oh, right. I can bring it back. Yeah, but, uh, the, uh, but I'm saying they're not even, like, I'm saying, because we know that it's gonna you're going to go to Colorado and you're going to buy it and you're going to bring it back to a place like Indiana where it's illegal. I'm saying that you're even going to have that yeah. where they're going from illegal to illegal, but they're going to avoid the tax implication, right? right? Yeah. And just to make more profit. Absolutely. And the, the because it's going from a legal state to a legal state, you're probably not going to have the kind of jail time you would if you went to an illegal state. So right. it's like I'm, I'm, I'm better to get it from Nevada and go to Washington to sell yeah. it where it's legal, even though it's I can sell it at a reduced price and it'll still be a black market issue than to, I don't know, come to Indiana or right. Illinois or something. Yeah. And, and honestly, like, That's it's, crazy. It's, it's how are they going to enforce this anyway? I mean, again, if it's a legal product, then it, it's so difficult. To, like, oh, where, where did you buy that? Uh, people don't keep receipts all that often, and you can just say, "Yeah, I paid cash," uh, and so there's no record. Is that why they're, and, and, that why they're trying to eliminate cash now? <laughs> well, um, social the, the coin or whatever. No, if you don't obey, they'll turn your oh social yeah. credit score. That's yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. No, I'm just yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of that. We we can go down to conspiracy theories too. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's not a conspiracy theory. It actually happens in China. I know that's true. That's and we, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid a lot of this because we're already <laughs> skirting an edge that uh, I don't know we'll get banned I don't know maybe we get banned that'd be a good thing people get yeah. up in arms about it or something and and, and maybe you'll be even more uh, uh, popular. successful I and, and popular in, in uh, the underground economy okay. in the, <laughs> they're gonna be smuggling soon to be legends in yes. hey hey did you hear the uh, new soon to be legends episode yep you can't get it on five that dollars. platform anymore it's five bucks I'll give it yeah. to you on a CD. There you go. That's, <laughs> that is a fantasy world I don't want to live in. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. there you go. So, uh, so there. Mer- what else? What else you got? What other weird kind of? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's plastic bags bans and taxes and and, impo- yep. and mandatory fees have been around. Really, I guess uh, San Francisco was the first one to pass it, and I think uh, either 05 or 07. I think 2007 on plastic bags. Uh, so, so-called single-use plastic bags. Okay. Right? So the idea is that oh well, these are produced using oil essentially, and so they're bad for the environment. They don't decompose. Oh, is that why they did that? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought they did it because they were going in the ocean and they were cared about. Fish. I thought they did and, it because they wanted to save the trees from the paper bag use. Well, I mean, like so banning plastic. Wait, so has we led literally to more people to use paper. <laughs> Uh, the whole point actually- was we're already in a good spot in the 70s using paper and glass bottles where you had to return them and yeah. you put a deposit in and they yeah. took all that away. Yeah. And it seems like it's, it's we're going worse. right yeah, yeah. It's we're going right back to where we started. Yeah. That's all right. Well, yeah. I I don't know. I, I had no idea. I mean, I knew that they did it. I thought it was in you know, plastic in the ocean thing. Uh, I'm sure that there, there's plastic in general is, is in the ocean has been uh, probably part of this overall. Uh, yeah, but I mean most well. of the most of the plastic in the ocean, from my understanding, comes from Asian countries, it like does. India yeah. and China, particularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so true. I mean, I don't know what our, ours go into a landfill. So right. I don't know. Um, and, and and certainly it doesn't decompose right. uh, like paper would. Um, but here's you know the, the, it, it sounds great. Right, it's a very well-intended policy. Sure, right. Um, I mean, that, that I th- the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Right, but I mean, I, but, but yeah, that's true. But the, I, but I think that's kind of the point of, of calling them unintended consequences. I mean, yeah. we, we like to joke about it now, like oh, they don't know what the hell they're doing. But the reality of the situation, I, mean, I I think these people are all very well-intended. Oh, yeah, we absolutely. want people to smoke less. We want people to not use plastic bags because it's bad for the environment. We want to make sure we don't have I don't know, straws or whatever else, right. because we, the the turtles eat it or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, so it is well-intended, but in Absolutely. the end, your point is, okay, they're trying they to backfire. do these things, and they yeah. backfire, and they backfire pretty badly. Yes. Yeah. Right? And then they're afraid to admit that they were wrong, right? I think that's yeah. the other half of this. Right. 
Um, and so in, in the case of these plastic bags, right. looking at how do they fail, well, you always have to ask and ask, well, okay, if not this, then what? Right. Right. We clearly have, there's a use for these plastic bags. We like to carry our stuff back home that we buy. Right. Um, and, and so uh, if we're not going to use these single use plastic bags, what are we going to use? And right. so some people might, might use the, the thicker plastic bags that are reusable. Right. Right. But they're um, still plastic bags. But they're right? still plastic bags. You have to use, in order to be um, basically environmentally equivalent, Okay. you have to use those reusable plastic bags 11, at least 11 times before they are equivalent to using 11 different single-use plastic bags. Really? Yeah. And most people don't... Those, like, the reusable bags you get at, like, Kroger or Trader Joe's or something like yeah. that, those and, are, and, those or, are and, still... Or like, Ikea or whatever. Right. Right. Those are still plastic bags. Yeah. Right? And because you reuse them, right, it's supposed to be safer. But your point is you have to reuse them at least 11 times yeah. for it to even be equal. Right. And you, on your 12th one, you might save the environment a little by one little plastic bit. bag? People aren't doing that. Um, really? there's, there's a study uh, okay. uh, uh, in Austin uh, that it's a basically people substituted basically really close to one one for one. Really? Yeah. Uh, and so that was a massive disaster. So okay. are, they, are, the, are the multi-use bags that are, that are being sold, are they actually worse for the environment? Or is it Those are. Yeah. Those really are. Yeah. So basically you're saying they're taking these one plastic bags that aren't great for the environment – you're substituting in a one that's actually worse for the environment, but you're using it more, and the impact is 11 times worse. Effectively. And if yeah. you don't use it 11 times, you're doing more damage than yeah. you would be otherwise. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you could say, okay, well, uh, but a lot of people are using canvas bags instead. Okay. Right? Those take a lot of energy to, to produce. Okay. Right? And so, again, up front, they're worse. Uh, but, again, you can spread that out over many uses. Right. Right? You have to use it something like 140 times. Really, for the canvas bag to have the same economic impact or uh, yeah. ecological impact, a canvas bag, you have to use it 140 times versus one of those little thin Single paper. use bags. But yeah. doesn't canvas biodegrade? Um, if not, so the, why aren't we using about, hemp? He's talking about the processing of making them. Uh, yeah. That's I get really it, but it's also yeah, there's so, an environmental impact. Yeah. So of before it's plastic, in the landfill. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So all of, all of that's like before the landfill part. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, and, and and basically the argument then is, well, once it gets to the landfill, the canvas will biodegrade, and we're going to be a lot better off. Right. And your point is, yeah, but before it gets to the landfill, it's already doing way more damage. Yeah. And there's no way people are using them anywhere close to 100 times. And that kind of goes to uh, the point great. of the big push for the electric car and the lithium batteries, lithium battery, yeah. and nickel, and the mining of God, that, that is very is so toxic, very to destructive to the environment. Yeah. And and there's no place to to get rid of yeah, them. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, now the other part with so uh, how are we going to save the Earth, man? Yeah, um, you don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have that answer. You don't have that answer. Like, Go to Mars. Not enough, not enough money. <laughs> Thanks, Elon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but the the other part on those the the canvas or canvas bags um, is uh, when San Francisco banned in 2007 right uh, the, the single use plastic bags. Uh, a ton of people went into using the, the canvas bags, um, but um, there's only a, a very low percentage of people that end up washing their canvas bags or bleaching them. Okay. Yet they're putting meat oh. uh, from the grocery store in them. I hadn't even thought about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, again, unintended consequences. Yeah. Like, who, the, who in the world is going to think about this? The right? single so use bleach, hypodermic bleach needles, they don't have a problem with, it doesn't seem like. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a different issue, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. But, it's plastic. But the canvas, yeah. but the can, the yeah. can, canvas bag you're putting your food in, you have to like, Clean it, yeah. right? Yeah, and and, and they the people it. aren't doing that, and so admissions admissions uh, into ERs uh, after that ban, right? Um, relative to other counties right. that nearby, uh, went up by twenty five percent. Really, that as much a, as a result, and, and 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 were so, they specifically linked to that? that so E. coli and, and salmonella. Yeah. E e wow, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. I, unintended consequence. I would not have thought of that. Don't yeah, put your have. meat in a canvas bag is what I would guess. <laughs> is that a euphemism, Clark? Or No, that's a – so that's – no clams, no canvas shorts. Um, yeah. so, Very itchy. No, that's yeah. – that's crazy. Yeah. That's cra – uh, and are there any other places that have uh, – okay, so I was just in Ocean City, Maryland, mm -hmm. and there is no legal ban on right. single-use uh, plastic bags. But on the island, because they have a turtle sanctuary there, yeah. they have asked 
all of the shops to not use them. So literally none of the shops will use them. They didn't make a law and they didn't have a tax. They just said, hey, mm, bad for the turtles because people take these bags to the beach. They float out there. Yeah. Some turtle gets his head caught in there and suffocates to death. And we don't like that, right? Right. So or dolphins. Now, is that a more effective way to change societal behaviors than not putting... Just ask? Ask and not ma mandate? Maybe. Uh, I mean, it depends. I think a lot of this has to be uh, bottom-up driven. Like, you know, society has to kind of change it and right. figure out, okay, well, hey, I'm going to do this. But we also kind of need to understand all, what what are the consequences of everything we're doing. Like, again, not a very low percentage of people wash these bags. So, I mean, like, we have to understand what are going to be some of these consequences, wow. uh, even if it's bottom-up driven or top-down. Um, either way, we have to get a better grip over what are we actually doing. Right. And, 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 and. A lot of these unintended consequences were predicted. Uh, is that correct? I yeah. mean, it, it, so is there anything else on the horizon that you can see that sort of is going that way? Um, like, so, like you're talking about it, and you're like, no, eh, so, that's a bad idea. You know, I think that um, you know all of these are basically syntax is what we've been talking right. about. I think the next big new sin that we're going to tax, okay, is uh, and you already see it popping up a little bit, but I think they're going to start hitting it a lot heavier. Uh, is data uh, on cell phones um, because it's all Safe about phone data? cell phone data. Uh, so your data charges. Right. Um, They're going to tax that now? And I think it's because it's like, oh, well, we're addicted to our phones. And we're, you know, they want to encourage us to have better face-to-face -face communication. It's healthier for us. Uh, you don't want your kids it's just addicted something to just, your phone. Just wear your mask. Uh, just something else to tax? <laughs> I, it's, it really is. I think it, it's, this is more of an excuse to tax something. They're to greedy bastards. Uh, you know? <laughs> they are. <laughs> That's crazy. But it is going to be sold as, look, we're trying to discourage a bad behavior. So what do you, th so what do you think is going to happen there? So, so what is the unintended cost? Okay, so, so they want to discourage a bad behavior of, of, I don't know, looking at TikTok or something, right? Yeah. So they want to discourage that bad behavior. So they're going to tax that and make it cost more for your phone and your data services and all that sort yeah. of stuff, which in theory would reduce that. How, how would there be some sort of, I don't know, backlash or underground, uh, would, would, would you bring this a is, cell phone yeah. chip in from somewhere else or something that you <laughs> um, don't get? I wouldn't or? be surprised that there's going to be ways to that there's going to be something else that, that would be developed to get around it. So whether it be some new type of satellite that somebody would actually Elon. Uh, do. Or, yeah, <laughs> Elon. So he very, very well could develop something like that. But uh, I think a lot of the, the short-term response would be, okay, I'm going to get hooked up to, to Wi-Fi. Um, instead like of the it, data, instead of getting on, you know, getting it from from my cell phone service. And so, how would how would so would they be able to then do the same amount of tax the data coming off of a Wi-Fi signal? I mean, because already Not we're from going, the phone, we're but, already I mean, maybe doing on a lot other of other account, uh, certainly. Yeah, because we're already going to a lot of like my my cell phone picks up all kinds of yeah. Wi-Fi signals instead anyway because I think it's more efficient at least to the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is to me, but but uh, you know, and so. How would they? So you think that's what will happen? Is I, all of a sudden there'll be more Wi-Fi towers yeah. or something like that? Instead Not of necessarily well, Wi-Fi. I think it, and Wi-Fi towers, but I think it's more people are going to be instead of getting their data over the air, basically from this directly from the satellite that's right. hooked up to your cell phone. It's going to be okay. I'm going to tap into the Wi-Fi service at you know, Starbucks. Okay, and that's opening more gates for like all kinds of, of nefarious people you know, stealing your data. People stealing yeah. and, and, and so, um, they're all unsecured. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and so th that, that's that, why they're that on the phone be, all the time. Oh, yeah. unsecure, not insecure. Sorry. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> but I think and, that would be one of the un unintended consequences. You're going to see a lot more data stolen as a result of that. And oh, you're affecting okay. the people that are not very wealthy. You're going to, you're really hurting you're, the, you're going to hurt the poor, poor yeah. people, with all these syntaxes, really. Sure, generally yeah. speaking, that's true. But I think mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Like, I, it took a little bit to find out what the yeah. unintended consequences, but it's yeah. really interesting to predict that that identity theft mm -hmm. will probably be the thing that goes up as a result right. of that tax. Yeah. That, that'd that be interesting to see. I don't know. I don't, yeah. don't want to see I, it. But, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, but that would be your prediction at this right. point on that. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of crazy, man. I mean, geez, that. Okay, are there other taxes that are doing this, or are there and, other like? And then companies are going to have to charge you to use their of course Wi-Fi. You know, like yeah. Then all of a sudden, yeah, we did that. Remember, it used to be like, oh, you got to pay like five bucks to sit at at, uh, at McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi, and then they were like, no, nah, we're doing it for free. You can you know get a Big Mac and do it right. for free. And you're, you're thinking that they might go back to that. 
to come sit at a Starbucks. You got to pay yeah. you know, five I mean, bucks. If, if, they, if they got to pay a tax on that data, then uh, you know how it goes. It, Can it they depends. tax Wi-Fi data? <clears throat> they could tax the cable service. Uh, That's providing the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So they could end up kind of coming back around to try to tax that. Uh, which would then be in some way passed on to the consumer, sure, either through course. higher prices for the food in this, in, in the case of McDonald's, or taxing actually to, to get onto their their network. Um, but also, you know, if if they have to do more investment, suppose that that we do start using Wi-Fi a lot more, right? Um, if they have to invest in their security side more heavily as a result of that, then somehow that cost will be passed on to consumers as well. And that's and, a and, big and business. Well, that, well, you have that, but then you also have the cost of security services for the individual so putting put it on your own phone or your own computer as yeah. opposed to as opposed to having uh, you know mcdonald's do it for you right yeah, yeah. well so things are just going to cost more money uh, i think is the <laughs> the prediction i think yeah, a lot of times yeah yeah yes, just yeah. in general i think yeah. we we know that to be true <laughs> that's cool so but uh yeah you know, like you mentioned uh um uh, you know the effect of a lot of these these sin taxes is is Born by those who are, are less wealthy to begin with. Right. Uh, if you look at uh, in the case of cigarettes. Right. Uh, so you look at all these sin taxes. So cigarettes. Uh, it's something like only 15% of the overall population now smoke. But if you look at those who are below poverty, it's something closer to 29% of that population. Oh, really? Uh, so they're already smoking more. Right. Um, and then a dollar, you know, a five dollar tax on them is much more impactful than somebody that's making a hundred thousand dollars. Right. So, um, so it's a, it's the cigarette tax is incredibly regressive, uh, right. very heavily, uh, taxing of, of, of those who are less wealthy. Um, you look at, uh, gambling taxes again, much higher rate of participation in gambling for, for those that are less wealthy than, than those that are more wealthy. Right. Um, you look at any of these sin taxes though, whether, you know, uh, they they tend to always be very regressive, and 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 so oh so hey we could actually talk about then we bring up schools we could talk okay. about uh, anti uh, obesity programs okay right so schools um, try to impose uh, various ways to try to to encourage students to make better choices right, right? and so uh, part of it was okay we're going to try to do it and kind of like a I'd say a, a hard nudge or a shove right. like oh hey like sodas. Very okay. high in sugar, so we're going to just remove those entirely from from schools. Sure, uh, which I mean that seems healthy, again, right? I mean, yeah, it okay. seems like okay, okay, they're going to choose better better options, right? right? Um, however, what especially in elementary schools, what we have seen that in the data is that students then instead substituted toward chocolate milk, okay, which has far more fat and has a ton of sugar. Uh, if not more sugar than the soda, and more calories, overall. and more calories, uh, and so obesity has actually gone up. up. As a result of getting that. rid of the soda, yeah. Uh, it, again, so the, what if we caffeinate the milk and they actually have extra <laughs> energy to burn it? How about that? No, I don't think that the teachers are going to like that. They're one. not going to like that <laughs> one. Okay. Well, even the uh, power aids and stuff like that yeah. are high in sugar, but they, they still are. have those in the school. Right. So it's yeah. really weird uh, how they pick so, and choose. So that so what ended up happening is they get rid of they want to reduce childhood obesity by getting rid of soda, which is the uh, the the sin of the day. Yeah. Which makes them drink more chocolate milk, which made them more obese. Yes, that is, uh, and that was not. That's not a hard one to figure out. It's really not, right? Yeah. Wow. And so, what happened? So, do you have a similar consequence to that with the uh, New York City mandate on sodas of what was it more than thirty two ounces or something? Yeah, they, they had uh, bans. Various places have tried, you know, bans of any soda above certain size and, right. and others have had extra taxes or surcharges right. on things above that. Um, and ultimately what's, what people have done is, is like, like this is easily predictable, right. uh, is like, Oh, if the cap is 32 and that's where like, I, and I want more than, than 32 ounces, then I, I just two? buy two okay. uh, of something smaller. Like it, this is, it's easy to get around these. It's easy. To, and did you find like, cause I know, uh, what is it, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, something like that. They, they, they had a uh, Philadelphia or something like that. They had a really high tax. And then all of a sudden where people were buying them, they would literally leave the county, buy their sodas and come back. And then it actually hurt sales yes. in the city. So all yeah. the smaller businesses were hurting. That that sounds right. Yeah, that's, so right. that's right. On the soda, did they find, was, was it in long enough that people would literally smuggle soda in like they do the cigarettes? Not to the same way. Again, it's just that cross-border shopping, really what right. you were just describing. Uh, there's, there's a, I think this is in... Like people are smuggling cases of Coca Cola across. It's not really smuggling. It's more just for their their own personal consumption. Personal so, okay. So that's just cross border shopping. It's, that's that's tax actually legal. 
uh, and so it's okay. tax avoidance. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's a, uh, a Costco in Seattle that, uh, uh, again, city of Seattle had a, had a very high tax on soda. Okay. Uh, and so um, there was also a Costco that was not close, but not crazy far away. Right. But just outside of the city limits. Okay. And so there was a Costco that showed, okay, after the tax was imposed, they opposed it. Like they didn't want the tax. Sure. Uh, but uh, on their, their price tag, they show, okay, here's our price. Here's the tax, which is greater than their price, actually. And really? And here's the total that have, what you have to pay. And then a note below it, like, uh, we don't like this tax either. If you're unhappy about it and would still like to buy soda from Costco, here's the location of the, of the next closest Costco outside <laughs> of the city limits. That's crazy. Uh, and, did, and, and did it affect their numbers for uh, Costco? I mean, and so they, they certainly had lower sales of, of soda as a result of that. Right, but did, they, did, that they, did they find the matching like comparable on the other, um, other location? I don't know the case of that particular Costco, but certainly if you look at, uh, again, San Francisco, it comes up again. So they They've had all kinds it, of bans. They taxed it so high that it was higher than the cost of the soda itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like it cost, they were selling the soda, say, for a dollar. The tax was a dollar fifty, and now your $1 soda is... Two fifty, but yeah. if you drove ten miles, it would you'd be a get it for a dollar. Yeah, and if you're going to drive ten miles away to get soda, you're going to really stock up. Sure, right? Uh, and so you just buy in bulk at that stage. Well, uh, you're going to Costco, you're buying in bulk well, yeah. by default, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, I mean, if you look at at uh, the Berkeley soda tax, for instance, uh, you definitely see that people just went outside the Berkeley area, and sales went up pretty dramatically outside that region. So do, so do you find some of the inverse? Okay, so yeah, but the, the, the stores in Berkeley say, eh, we don't really want this. But do the stores outside of Berkeley go, go ahead, bro? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So oh, there's yeah. like, they're like, hey, I heard Berkeley's thinking about raising their soda tax. And then all the, all the vendors on the outside are like, hey, pay the politicians <laughs> to raise that tax in Berkeley. There, are, there have been some cases like down in uh, Arkansas where folks have, uh, some economists have looked at, okay, who, who have been the uh, behind the scenes, the supporters, right. um, you know, the, you know, providing campaign contributions right. uh, behind right. those that are proponents of taxes uh, or maintaining it's, high taxes or whatever happens to be. And certainly you get a lot of money that's coming in from outside the-, the From that particular area, yeah. because they know that their stuff will, their volume yeah. will go up as a result right. of that. Yeah. That's pretty cynical of me to have said that and then find out that it's really <laughs> it's true. true. That's crazy. Oh, that's yeah. awful and crazy at the there's, same time. There's a sign up in Michigan. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it Route 31, I think, is good. Okay. It's up there. Uh, so southbound 31 in Michigan, about a mile from the border, uh, that post um, – because Michigan tax on cigarettes is, is $2 per, uh, per pack, and it's basically a dollar here. Right. Uh, so you can save a dollar per pack you right. know, by shopping across the border. There's a sign from an Indiana uh, smoke shop advertising to people in Michigan, hey, like, come down, buy from us. And on there it says, no Michigan tax. Like, they are advertising, like, hey, you should buy them here because you There's want no to pay Michigan, your Michigan yeah. tax. And so businesses, I mean, like, they, they, it's, you know, they're going to, if, if they can uh, take advantage of some of these these aspects, they're going to. That's crazy. Well, I mean, it's, it's not crazy, really. It's uh, it, it's human nature, right. really. I mean, yeah. it's like, hey, well, especially in a especially in an environment where, where the cost of goods is going up so high, right? I mean, right. now you're now there isn't like a supply and demand issue. These are artificially forcing those prices up. So people are going to naturally try to find yeah. places to, you know, save a buck so that they can live yeah. more comfortably now, or whatever. Do you think like uh, with the big push for the meatless, um, the, 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 the to, there'd be a tax meats? like on, yeah, the because of the impossible. <laughs> That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I heard that That's, Soylent yeah. Green, the movie. It's people. <laughs> yeah. I heard Soylent Green, the movie, was set in 2022. So I'm not eating anything that that's not real meat. Apparently, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't know remember. that. Yeah. I didn't, set in I didn't realize it was set in, in Set in 2022. Year. So I'm not eating meatless food. I, <laughs> no, I, I don't know what's in it. There are a lot of chemicals. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and maybe people. No, I, I guess, yeah, but Clark's point, I think, is do you think that they will start taxing meat to force people on meatless stuff? I would not be surprised with if, crickets or something. if that industry that, you know, that are from the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the non-meat um, industry would be Pushing helping to, to push uh, some of the politicians to impose taxes or bans or whatever right. uh, on on the meat industry in some way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Clark, you think that's going to happen? Uh, well, you know, you, I wouldn't put it past any I, of them. I would not put it past. Yeah. yeah there's. But a, I also don't know that they have 
you know, a, a lot of money to actually engage heavily in, you know, a lot of the, the politics at this stage yet. Well, um, it's part of the Green New Deal. They'll put it in under that umbrella, you know. Well, like, yeah, yeah who knows? I mean, uh, who knows what they're going to do, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think that stuff, that I think that's what happens. Uh, we, we're talking a little bit more about politics, but I think you, you get something that's, I don't know, we're going to we're gonna have, we're going to do a, a, a bill about, I don't know, clean water and they're going to put this thing in the backside of it or something yeah. or you know oh it's going to it's going to be a bill about uh, giving everybody a tax break because they're bald and then they're going to actually put a that's they're going to put a lot of pork in their green Wait, they're, yeah, pork. <laughs> they're going to tax pork in their pork i don't know i'm just making stuff up now yeah. i right. think that people buy it right i don't know <laughs> that's fine <laughs> that's so is this all of this stuff in your book so everything that that's that, that we've discussed that has been related to taxation, right, uh, or bans, actually, is, is in for your own good. For your own good. Um, Ooh, and uh, um, what else? What else you got? Anything else like kind of weird and cool? In what are the, what are the bans? Flat out bans. Oh yeah. So, so uh, a lot of that is actually related in in, in this particular book uh, is related to uh, plastic bags, and then some. There's some discussion on um, you know the, the traditional illegal drugs, so marijuana okay, will be yeah. included in okay. that. Okay. But uh, uh, that's kind of where we limit. Or the this. meth tax I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so we don't we don't get you know, too far too far down the road into the, into illegal the illegal stuff, but really drugs, more. About, well, but, I mean, ultimately, but, yeah, you want to you're talking more about the taxation and yeah. the unintended consequences yeah. of those, particularly sin taxes. Yeah. Right. And so, really, the, you know, this particular book is all about you know how does government in general, whether it be the the state level or federal or whatever, right? Um, how do they use excise taxes in particular okay. to try to Manipulate you behavior. Manipulate your behavior in ways that they think are in your interest. Right. Right. Whether it's actually in your interest or not, like, who knows? Right. Uh, but, um, I mean, that's really, you know, we're trying to show, like, a lot of times this is, these are backfiring. They're causing us to change right. our, our behavior in very predictable ways. Are, are uh, there any of them that aren't backfiring that you guys know of? Or are you only looking at the ones you know are backfiring? Um, I, there's always going to be some tax that uh, every tax is going to lead to some unintended consequence. Okay. Um, I mean, like, you know, you could look at, we can go historically here and look at, uh, um, you know, prior to having the ability, the, the ability to tax property the way that we do today, having right. very detailed data. Um, I mean, they would really originally just have somebody go out and measure, okay, what's your street footage? Okay. Right. And so the areas so Alexandria, Virginia, San Francisco, they both actually had these types of taxes here in the United States. It was a very European thing okay. at one point. Um, and so notice those are also the cities where you have row houses. Oh, you, so they're all they're yeah. all thin. They're all thin. Right. Uh, again, and, and they're very tall, right? So um, oh, so that so oh, it, that's it, that was all. It became a a staple for them, like a, kind of an architectural so, like you know like aspect of those cities. But it was actually as a result of tax code. Really. Yeah. See, I thought it was like a population thing. Like they're trying to jam as many people yeah. in as possible. But really, like you're saying that that architectural style of having very small square footage in front of the house, but yeah. really way back and then yeah. tall yeah. as a function of because they're only taxing the street front footage right. or whatever. Yeah, that's that's um, interesting too. Other man. other Holy countries, crap. again, a little bit further back. So we're now in the 17th century, uh, 18th century. Um you know, they would uh, tax the number of windows because it was easy for an, a tax assessor to go around and just count the number of windows. Right. And so what you ended up seeing is they just started, you know, houses that already, you know, clearly if you, you were building a new house, you just build a house with larger windows. So that's right. where the bay windows actually came okay. popular. Um, but then if you already had a house that was built, you just bricked them up uh, to reduce your tax bill. Oh, really? And you can still see can where still people, see that. where that, where they did that. I wonder, I thought that uh, I did, that's why they, cause you'll see those old brick buildings yeah. somewhere and they actually have bricked up those windows. And it's yeah. like, well, I, I thought they were going to make another room or something, but really they were doing that to avoid taxes. Avoid taxes. Yeah. Well, um, that's interesting. I heard there was a thing in the 1700s that, uh, there was some sort of tea tax that people got <laughs> upset about. Yeah. 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 I had a party about yeah. it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. So was it was they were actually uh, mad at the actual T uh, tax, or were they actually mad at the taxed enough already? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's it, a different. It, it was. It was that really was um, the the T was really just what they used as the example. That was really right. high tax, but it was really that. Like, look, we're no paying high taxes on a lot of things, and, and we're we not getting much from you guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we don't have representation. Yeah. yeah. We're not representing. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 that was really more of a you know yeah. bad long joke. 
Yeah, yeah sorry. More than I, I, I made it worse. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Sorry. I'm good that's at that. Good. Yeah, we're yeah. You're in. The, you're at the right place, then. <laughs> That'll be fun. So you come here, and there's plenty of bad jokes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we're not too bad here. No, this, no, we did okay here. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. We're like half and half. So, are, are there anything new that you're studying that you're kind of looking at on the horizon, like uh, like like Bitcoin uh, or uh, like you said, you were talking. They were talking about maybe taxing data or anything like that. So, um, you know. Well, we're going to try and get one last one yeah. in here. Yeah. Let's see so what we got. actually, here, let's switch it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, away from taxes and stuff. And, okay. And so, so yeah, to hell with yeah, your yeah. books. Got it. So okay. um, uh, the NFL season is about to start. So okay. I have some research. We were the first ones to look at the effects of fantasy sports participation on basically fandom. Okay. Right? And the way that we, we were measuring fandom is how much, how many games do you watch on television? Okay. And then how many games do you actually attend? Okay. Um, and so it, this is not counterintuitive at all. It's just actually kind of a cool okay. you know, like application, right? So we study sports for fun, right? Right. So um, and uh, um, you know we had a ton of data. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that the viewing went up. Viewing. So I was going into it. I was pretty certain that we were going to see television viewership go up. Okay. Right. Because you think about it, like, you know, whenever I first got into fantasy sports, I was that dork that was sitting there. I'd have my cell phone on, you know, right. uh, on the app. I would have my laptop here tracking more stuff. And then I have the game. I had the right. NFL uh, Sunday ticket. So right. if I saw one of my team, one of my guys was uh, in the red zone, I'd switch over to that game. Okay. Right? Uh, so I was all over the place. Right. right? And so clearly viewership's probably going to go up. And that, right. there was no question whether it's baseball, fantasy baseball or fantasy football. Okay. Your viewership went up on on TV. The one I wasn't certain about was a game attendance. Okay. Because if you are really into fantasy sports, you want to track your your players, and right. so it's you don't want difficult get... to do at the game. So, you, so so if you're say a Colts fan and you want to go see a Colts game, you want to go to the live game, and that's great. Yeah. But if you're uh, uh, the Nesbitt's Nancy's or whatever <laughs> your your fantasy football team name is, and you got all these other people, you don't want to go to the Colts games because you're going to miss whatever the guy right. for the Titans or the Patriots or the yeah. Rams is doing, and then yeah. you're not going to have that enjoyment when they score, yeah. and you can tell your buddy, ha <laughs> ha. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. So so uh, what was the answer? Like That was it, it, that, the that, intuitive. That, so. Um, so again, I didn't know which which way it was going to go, but it actually attendance went up really? as a result of fantasy sports. Oh, cool! Which now looking back, this study has been published for like eight eight years or so. Uh, but now looking back and seeing how the NFL has invested in fantasy, so uh, like it's like very you know you can get fantasy updates in the stadiums, right? Um, and you know the NFL has gone all in on right. on trying to encourage fantasy uh, because I think they saw the numbers as well. Okay. Um, and not they made from that, my study, but from right. from their own numbers, and they're like, okay, this is this actually is improving our sales. Okay, right, and so it's kind of interesting. And is that, that going to work on other? Did, did that work on other sports as well? Like, so uh, it did base- work for baseball. Okay, yeah. so uh, it's not as pronounced as okay. it is for the NFL. Honestly, I think you know there's not as many people that do fantasy baseball because it's a really long it's hard season. to keep up Man, every it's, it's, game. It's, I every did it day. one year. Yeah. And it was just like, so tough. So yeah, and I guess that's kind of what the question was is is because of the nature of football being a uh, so few games yeah. uh, and, and so few teams, relatively speaking, that you're, there's so many, there's so few events in the course of a season from a game standpoint that it's perfect for that. Yeah, you have Whereas, all week to plan for your your right, loss. Right. And yeah. <laughs> For your loss, <laughs> welcome to Cl- Clark's optimism. I, I'm, I'm normally I'm normally out of the running six six games into the I season. I thought you were trying to imply something about my team. No, here, no, so. I'm I, I, no. <laughs> No, but I mean that's the point. So, so you think is is that a thing? Is the NFL like uniquely qualified for that, or are you going to find and and maybe baseball be just because it's popular, but not really going to help hockey or NASCAR or uh, or uh, I don't know I, pro I, lacrosse or something? I uh, I doubt that we would see as much of an impact with the NHL or with NASCAR just because I don't think as many people that are their fans are actually playing fantasy. Uh, for those sports like that, well, that it all goes to it's hard to do it every day you yeah. got a week to plan for the nfl right. basically yeah, but so, i mean yeah, that's, so that's i think what that, that's nascar yeah. would, but see in nascar or or indycar or f1 or something like that that might actually work because of that same uh it, it, they yeah. only had to do it once a week type of right. thing and you're only going to have 32 events or whatever the deal is right yeah. so but with nascar i think and, and maybe they, there's been some new uh innovations within fantasy that that i'm not aware of but um I mean, it's just oftentimes just the finishing order, and so it's right. not as fun. Like you know, like with 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 football, it's like okay, I can points per reception or, or run, um, yeah, and, and so, all that type of stuff. So like, they there's have, a lot more. Moving they'd have parts. to change that thing. Like oh, yeah. you know, they have these uh, 
the stages. The sta- and, they have yeah. the stages and stage wins, and you got qualifying times and laps led right. and all that sort of stuff. So the the, the yeah. more analytics that they can put into yep. something like that, the, yeah, the laps the led and all that. You yeah. know. So when I said laps led, you meant <laughs> laps led. Uh, okay, good. No, so I mean that. So if if they put more of that analytics in, you think it, that it might could help? actually mimic more of what we're seeing. Now in, here's the, the other NFL. question: Do you think it's a function of the fandom as well that mm. uh, football and baseball in particular uh, have? Eh, nerds like baseball's always had those guys that sit in the stands and and fill out the score box as the game goes and in football we always sit around afterwards and like well if i was the gm i'd have picked that guy right Right. and there's sort of that thing but you never you never have people in nascar NASCAR. oh i would have taken that driver off of that dirt track to put in my car like people don't think that way and it's just do you think that's a function of it as well i think that'll limit the the market for fantasy like racing in general right yeah i got you yeah but it also taps into another vice, right? Which is gambling. Yes, it does. Right. So um, there's there's going to be some longevity to that. Yeah. And then there's going to be another way to tax it. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, tax it. Bring that yeah. thing around. Everything that's fun again. is taxed. And it's unintended consequences. Yeah. If there's anything fun that that you enjoy, they're going to tax the hell out of it eventually. Right? Probably. <laughs> this true. podcast is so fun. I'm this sure so fun. They're going to start taxing this thing. Exactly. That's right. right. It's the soon to be legends tax. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Well, Todd, thanks for coming in. This has kind of been kind of cool stuff, man. Yeah, hopefully, this is not too boring for everybody. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's. Hey, I stayed awake for the whole thing. Did you? Yes. Yeah, that, well, I saw you dozing off a little bit over yeah. there. Did you? Did he? Oh, so. Looking down at my phone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what it was. All right, that's good. All right, well, thanks for coming in. I yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. It was good on. times, and for everybody else, hey, stay tuned. We're not every week now, but we're definitely going to be. Uh, you know, stay tuned to Soon to Be Legends. We'll be dropping special episodes um, as we take into our off season here. And uh, good luck to everybody. If you want to see more stuff, go to uh, LDR Studios on YouTube, Epiphany Storm on YouTube, EpiphanyStormPictures.com, LDRStudios.com. Pick up some interesting stuff that uh, Clark and I have been doing. Uh, yes, yeah, together bit. for the last ten some years. Some of like ten years. Like years, years right? We've been doing stuff separately. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good stuff on both of those places. You can check out those YouTube channels as well. So. Tiffany Storm, LDR Studios. Thank like you and subscribe. In. Oh, like and subscribe. And yes. hit the uh, notification button. Yes, all that. Right. So good stuff. Thank you very much, Todd. All right. Thank you. We'll see you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys.